peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for salvation. Thank you for the simplicity of your gospel. I pray that you'll bless today's video and that this video may be a blessing to anyone listening. Forgive us for our shortcomings, Lord, for we are far from perfect, so your will may be done. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray, amen. A while back, I was asked a question, well, actually a two-part question regarding the following. Can you do a video explaining on King Saul losing the Holy Spirit? I also would want to know if Saul is in heaven, as I've read from some people that he is in heaven, but I don't see it. Good question, and thank you so much for your question. I meditated on this, and I will share an answer by the guidance of the Holy Spirit according to the Word of God, which is my goal for this vid in hopes that this will inspire all of us to ask the Holy Spirit for guidance, understanding God's Word, and to search the Scripture. First of all, before I answer the question, I'd like to share from the Word of God three differences between the workings of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament versus the workings of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Difference number one, understanding versus revelation. In the New Testament, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit to be a believer's guide and teacher, demonstrating a shift in how understanding of truths is facilitated after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We read in John chapter 14, verse 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Christ makes yet another promise in John 16, verse 13. How be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. So, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth, guiding believers in all truth, teaching whatsoever the Lord Jesus Christ has said. In the Old Testament, however, the Holy Spirit provided revelation and understanding, but often in more limited ways and to specific individuals like prophets. We read in Daniel chapter 12, verse 8 and 9, And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the word are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Even prophets like Daniel did not fully understand all the revelations they received. Some matters were not fully comprehensible until a later time. Amos chapter 3 verse 7, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. In the Old Testament, God primarily revealed his plans and intentions through prophets. They received divine revelations about future events, God's will and messages for his people. Difference number two, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 9, the Word of God says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Salvation by grace through faith is the requirement for the Holy Spirit to live inside the believer. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Simply put, if the Holy Spirit is not inside of this person, he or she is not saved. But if the person is saved, the Holy Spirit indwells inside the believer. This was not the case for Old Testament saints. For example, Judges chapter 14, verse 6, the Word of God says, And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. So we see instead of the Holy Spirit indwelling in this person, the Holy Spirit came upon a person. Another example we find in 2 Chronicles chapter 24 verse 20, And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah the son of Jehoiadiah, the priest, which stood above the people, and said unto them, Thus saith God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he also forsaken you. You see that? He hath also forsaken you. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon a person, yet the Holy Spirit could leave this person. And that leads us to difference number three. Salvation equals to be sealed. One of the strongest biblical points a believer can make on eternal security, aka once saved, always saved, during our current dispensation of the grace of God, acts as the seal of God. 
We read in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22, Now he which established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Two things to point out here. The earnest of the Spirit, which signifies the presence of the Holy Spirit within believers as a guarantee or down payment, ensuring their future inheritance, aka salvation, and redemption promised by the Most High. B, the seal of God, which furthermore proves the presence of the Holy Spirit, as well as the foretaste of the blessings to come, i.e. eternal life. And the seal of God, marking the ownership of His people. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Very self-explanatory, the Apostle Paul writes that a believer can grieve the Holy Spirit of God, yet is sealed unto the day of redemption, that being life after death, again, eternal life. Compare that to the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, which the Holy Spirit could be lost. We read in Psalm 51 verse 11, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. In this prayer of repentance from David, there is a plea not to be cast away from God's presence and not to lose the Holy Spirit due to sin. So in summary, for New Testament saints like you and me, the Holy Spirit guides us in all truth, whereas in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit gave revelation to prophets who did not fully understand the prophecy in some instances. Number two, the Holy Spirit indwells in us believers today, whereas in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon people. Number three, the Holy Spirit seals a believer today, securing his or her salvation eternally with the seal of God, whereas in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit could be lost. Now that we have established the distinction of the Holy Spirit's workings in the Old Testament versus the New Testament, let's get into answering part A of the question, can you please explain King Saul's loss of the Holy Spirit in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14? We read, but the Spirit of God departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. The context of this passage occurs within the transition of kingship from Saul to David. The Most High had rejected Saul due to his disobedience under God's instruction, who sent to anoint a new king from the sons of Jesse, that being David. We read in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness, as is iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. At one point, the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of God, did come upon King Saul as we read in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 1 and 10. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. You see that? We read that Old Testament phrase again, the Spirit of God came upon him. King Saul had been anointed by God's Spirit as king over Israel. However, due to Saul's repeated disobedience and failure to fully follow God's commandments, the Spirit of the Lord departed him. Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14 again. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14 serves as a pivotal moment in King Saul's reign, signaling the departure of God's Spirit and the subsequent troubles that befell him. The departure of the Spirit from Saul was a consequence of his disobedience and rejection of God's commands. Saul had repeatedly acted against God's will, which eventually led to God withdrawing his spirit from him. Now let's answer part B. If Saul lost the Holy Spirit, is he in heaven? Now the Word of God doesn't give a straight yes or no answer, and so I encourage you to read the following passage in full for proper exegetical context. We read 1 Samuel chapter 28, verses 16 to 19. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and is become thine enemy? And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me, for the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand, and given it to thy neighbor, even to David, because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest his fierce wrath upon Amalek. 
Therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the land of the Philistines. And tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. So a few points here. A. Saul's consequences of disobedience. Samuel reinforces that the loss of the kingdom and the impending defeat in battle were direct consequences of Saul's disobedience and failure to fulfill God's commands regarding Amalek. Amalek refers to the people descended from Amalek, the grandson of Esau, the brother of Jacob. The Amalekites were the Israelites' enemies who eventually defeated King Saul. B. Saul's relationship with the Most High. Samuel affirms that God departed from Saul, emphasizing the severe connection between Saul and the Most High, due to Saul's disobedience and failure to execute God's commandments. C. Imminent death. The prophecy of Saul and his son's deaths in battle is foretold. Samuel's statement, Tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me, suggests their imminent demise and the assurance of joining Samuel in the afterlife. Mind you, this is the Old Testament, and with the exceptions of a few, all Old Testament saints did not go straight to heaven. This is what our Lord Jesus Christ said to the thief on the cross in Luke 23, verse 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Another term used is Abraham's bosom. We read in Luke 16, verses 22 to 23. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Now given that Samuel was a prophet of God, and two books were named after Samuel, I think it's safe to say that Samuel inherited paradise. And after Jesus Christ's resurrection, Samuel went to heaven. And so from where Samuel was sitting, telling Saul, And tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. It could mean Samuel would see Saul in Abraham's bosom, aka paradise. It could also mean in hell, as hell was juxtaposed with Abraham's bosom, as we saw in the example of the rich man in hell seeing Abraham's bosom as per Luke 16 verses 22 to 23. For the gentlemen in the comment section, thank you for your question. I hope this not only gives you a sufficient answer, I also encourage you to search the scriptures. And I hope this video was insightful for you, fellow brethren, hoping that this may inspire you to ask the Holy Spirit for guidance when it comes to understanding God's word and to study to show thyself approved, a workman not needeth to be ashamed. If you have a question of your own, put them in the comment section below and Lord willingly, I will make a video on that by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit according to the word of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today's video and I pray that you will bless the listener, inspire them through your Holy Spirit to search the scripture. Forgive us for our shortcomings, Lord, and correct us when we are wrong. May your will be done, Lord, in Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray, amen.